Welcome back to this special one hour edition of Facing South Florida. A live look here from Southwest Regional Library in Pembroke Pines, where about 100 people have come out for early voting there so far this morning. You can vote until 7 this evening. Now, one disturbing trend we are seeing this year is Republican candidates for State House and State Senate avoid debates and forums, and instead just use money the party has collected from lobbyists and special interests to run commercials and fill your mailboxes with campaign material. Nowhere is that strategy more in effect than in Senate District 36, where Democrat Raquel Pacheco is challenging Republican State Senator Ileana Garcia. I recently spoke to Pacheco about this growing trend. The one thing that stood out to me um, from my experiences uh, sitting at the, the precincts at the polls is that people are not really, they're not coming to vote on issues. This is not an issue driven campaign. This is about ideology. And I say that because there's this immense uh, display of anti-democratic sentiment. Um, and I say that because of the t-shirts that I see people wear, the Republicans wear to the polls, um, the, their aggressive tone, um, their aggressive behavior. Um, you know, it's, it's, I can't, I don't want to get into specifics about how I've been treated and the things that have been said, said to me from, uh, from GOP voters, because it doesn't really matter. But what does stand out to me is that, um, when I engage with them to discuss issues uh, or policies, that is of no concern. This is 100% ideolo ideology driven. One of the things that uh, that is fascinating to me about your race in particular is that we had a situation where you're running now against Ileana Garcia, who two years ago narrowly won by just a handful of votes uh, amid a scandal in which a ghost candidate was placed into the race by Republican operatives to siphon votes off away from Democrats, allowing Ileana Garcia to win. And I think what we're seeing today is the next step in that, which is a ghost candidate herself. She is now the ghost candidate because we do not see Ileana Garcia at events. She does not agree to interviews. She has not agreed to be part of any debates or forums. Correct me if I'm wrong. Have you been able to have any forums no. or debates with, with your opponent? No. no, no, Jim, you're absolutely correct. She is a ghost candidate. As a matter of fact, just last night, um, Republican Mayor Vince Lago from Coral Gables held a town hall in which she was she was the, the, the special guest. She was supposed to be there and she was a no show. Um, this is consistent for her. And, you know, and you mentioned the, the fraudulent scheme uh, that got her elected. So, I mean, it really shouldn't come as a surprise that she doesn't have uh, the support from from the, the voters. You look at her campaign finances, for example, and there's an overwhelming majority of support from a special interest and in, in PACs. Um, in fact, you know, she's she's got half of the individual donors that I have, um, but she's swimming in a pool of money. So, you know, it's, it's she's got let me let me just sort of put some context to this i think between your political committee and your campaign you've raised about 215 220 thousand dollars i think between her political committee and her campaign she's raised close to two million dollars and that doesn't count outside groups who have also been spending um, where you've not really gotten any outside groups to come in and spend on your behalf for mailers or TV or anything else, whereas she has. And I think this is, sadly, I think this is the recipe that Republicans are running, not just in this race, but in others. And it's worrying that the candidates won't actually debate, won't engage with the public, but instead will be bombarded, allow the public to be bombarded by television commercials and mailers funded by special interests out of Tallahassee. So in a way, her campaign is entirely run out of Tallahassee at this point. Am I 100 percent. No, yeah. you are not misstating it at all. You have a, an ex, you, you, you're you're getting it. You're seeing exactly what it is. And it's not just in my case. It's the Republican approach. And quite frankly, I think it's a disgrace and that voters deserve better. And the fact that, you, you know, my opponent and others are not even willing to debate the, um, their their opponents um, should be disqualifying. I think that people that voters have the right to ask questions and to understand positions. And I'll tell you, when I go knocking on doors, there's one thing that's consistent. Two things. First, 
nobody knows who Senator Garcia is. And two, nobody understands her positions. And that's precisely how she wants it to be. Because for as long as she's funded by special interests, she does, she feels she doesn't have to worry. You know, the message that we're delivering to voters is that, you know, if, if you're okay with that, if you want special interests and a ghost candidate to dominate your future and your children's future, then, then I'm not your candidate. But if you want somebody who is really genuinely interested in, in representing your interests in the interests of the district, and obviously, as you can see from my finance reports, not influenced whatsoever by um, special interests or PACs or people doing business in Tallahassee, then I'm the one for you. You know, the, the Senate Republican campaign uh, funded out of Tallahassee, which is bankrolled with, uh, with a lot of money from everything from big sugar to corporate interests to all sorts of big businesses across the, across the state that do business with the state of Florida and need things from the legislature. They've pumped tens of million dollars into that Senate fund that in turn then finances not just her campaign, but a lot of other state Senate races where we're seeing the same type of thing being done. I, I'm, I'm troubled that, that this may actually succeed and that the lesson for Republicans to learn out of this is don't engage actually with voters except through slick marketing and TV commercials funded by big business. I share that fear. I share that fear because that could set a precedent for what we have in, in future campaigns in the years to come. And none of that is OK. That is not a, you know reflective of a democracy. This is how authoritarian governments rule. Um, and, you know, the, the less interaction with the voters, the better, because essentially it protects their candidates. Um, you know, m nobody knows my opponent has extreme views. Nobody knows that she wants to ban abortion with zero exceptions for mother, for the life of the mother or or rape or incest and when they find out they're in shock and they they say no we absolutely cannot support her so the the the, the fewer people that know that the better off she is um nobody understands that she you know she supports open carry gun laws um and a lot of npas that we're talking to um actually really care about gun safety. They don't know that um, she was, you know, fund FPL was involved in the fake candidate scheme and, and that reflects in her donor base. So I, I share that fair with you. Um, and, and sadly, there's not much we can do. The power is in the hands of the voters where it always has been. And people need to take it very seriously. As you know, I served my country. I served our country for six years. Uh, lots of people have died to protect these rights, and we really should not take them for granted. Um, and this is really one of those moments where I feel Floridians have to decide and go to the polls and, 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 and vote in favor of a democracy or against it, because there is no clearer distinction for me um, based on what you've said, based on my observations, based on the strategies that they've employed. There is no the, the writing is on the wall. We need to defend our democracy. We need to stand up for our process um, and we can't just let them treat us like we're inconsequential and they don't have any obligation to answer questions. When we come back, more of my interview with the editorial page editors for the Miami Herald and the Sun Sentinel. And now, as you look at live pictures from the Miami-Dade Fairgrounds, where former President Trump will be speaking, we'll be right back.